Hey everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Sunny, your host. And uh, in this session, we are going to explore a very, like, a library that is called Link. It's still in, it's under, um, like, it's uh, in, uh, it's in initial phase only. But I like the concept of it, okay? And uh, it's very good for the people who are who want to explain, but also for the developer as well. So they, they can visualize that, like, what they are building. Okay, they can visualize the pipeline and like simultaneously they can see that okay, what's going on. And uh, as a teacher, okay, or as a mentor, I can see that it's a very good tool for me. Okay, so if you are also a mentor and you would like to add certain tools into your, uh, like, in your teaching strategies, so you can definitely add this one. But this is going to help the people or the students to visualize things, right? And uh, it will make our job easy as well. So let me show you that, okay, what you will learn in this, right? Okay, so here we are on the page of uh, link. Okay, and you can just see that uh, this diagram itself is telling you a lot of things. Okay, uh, so let's go to the documentation part. So as you can see where you will find out that, okay, what it works. So you can look for the key features and you will get an idea. Okay, so let me show you that what you will see in this demo. Okay, so I will have, I already created here. So you will see that I will code everything, right? And in front of you, and then I will show you that, okay, how you can attach this component and you will be able to see here uh, these components, okay? And you will see that, okay, how beautifully it is uh, created, right? And you can, I will show you another feature of it is that like how you can this even do the git commit here itself, right? So that's also a very interesting feature that they have given. So it's going to be a very interesting tool, okay? So let's get started. So as you can see, we are at the home page of this library called as link. Okay, and in order to access this, you will need to uh, click on this get started for free, right? Once you do this, so you it will ask you for your first name, last name and email and all those things. And uh, once you submit this, okay, request, so you will get a mail, okay, something like this, where you will also get a product key, right? And you have to use it product key for the first time whenever you'll be using it, okay? So it will opt like it will give you a prompt that okay you need to enter this okay so uh, that's the bare minimum that is required as of now and uh, so what we can do is now let's go back to our VS code okay where I will show you that okay how the remaining setup we can do so here you will see I have this uh, simple like uh, VS code right now so you can see get ignore files are there which are by default which is present in my any of my github repository okay and then in it setup.sh i think if you have previously seen my videos so i have explained about this file so it is nothing but it was automatically it will create an environment for you with this 3.8 version and uh, at the end it will install all the requirements which is present into requirements.txt okay so here you will see that i will be using for this project we have tensorflow numpy matplotlib and pandas and seaborn and then we have mrx link this is the actual library link and i'm using this version at uh, as of now okay this is the current version that they have so i have purposely i have purposefully have mentioned it here so and let me close this and let's start with the terminal and first of all let's create this environment quickly and then i will show you so yeah it's i'm using git bash as of now i think you most of you have already been seen using this so bash and in it set up dot sh and uh, i will now create let's let's let it finish okay so it will start creating this environment and uh, let's let it finish okay so i will be on pause for a moment so all the modules are now being installed and as you can see on just behind me that is you will see that vs code is asking that should i choose this uh, virtual environment okay for as a works of uh, for this project so okay, we can keep it as uh, we can just select yes okay and then let's wait for this installation to finish and then we can proceed further so here we go the installation is now finished okay so now what we can do is we can uh, let me just first of all activate the environments so conda activate and then environment okay so and we can start the jupyter lab now so make sure that uh, you start with the jupyter lab instead of jupyter notebook because it will only work into jupyter lab okay so let's start this and it will open jupyter lab into your default browser okay so here it is let's wait yeah so as you can see that uh, since we have installed a link so you will see there are certain uh, new icons that you may not have seen previously okay and uh, here you will see that there is if you click on this icon so it says that no pipeline and you can see that it is also giving you a git linkage okay so once you click here so you will see that it is automatically it will be able to find out dot git folder here okay so let's uh, it will take some time okay and this this options will not appear for you and because if you haven't entered any uh, like product key that i have shown you okay if you haven't entered that so these options will not come for you 
so let's wait here so what we can do is now since we do not have it is not able to find the files yet okay it will take some time to uh, like show up initially so let's wait so if it, if it is not appearing so you can just click on uh, refresh buttons okay so and it will appear so as you can see these icons are also changed and now if i can go to git so i should be able to see quickly okay still not is appearing uh, that's not a problem okay let's go back again to this our file system now what we can do is we can uh, like let's open a new file here so and we are going to again click on this um, Jupyter notebook so let's open this Jupyter notebook and now what I will do is I will fill this notebook with the, one of the like example code of MNIST data so we will try to train a model okay uh, we will use deep learning model and then I will show you that because that's not the agenda here so the agenda is to just focus on the tool so I will just write the code and I will write the I will show you that okay, how you can add the stages right so let's get started so let me fill up the code first okay so what I did is like uh, as you can see on the screen I have just created some uh, uh, like markdowns i have created right so for like what i will do first of all i will import a module then i will do a data ingestion and split data then define model and then compile model and then train the model and evaluate save and then finally i will show you that how you can do an inferencing okay so for all these days like these are a simple Jupyter notebook that whatever you have been doing so it's the same thing i have did okay so let's okay let's run this first of all just for a while now you can see now what i will do is i can uh, i can save this right first of all let's rename this uh, to let's call it as a demo okay demo.ipynb and what i will do is i can even commit it from here itself okay so that is also the advantage that is given here so you can see on the left hand side uh, there is a tab called as git right so here from here also we can do a commit right so i think it should be open the file browser okay so we can do check here or make a initialize a repository so do you really want to initialize the directory at git repo so we can initialize it so you can see that once i did here okay so uh, we are able to see right so untracked changes then changed whatever i have changed if i if it is modified so in that case so we will see that okay these are all files which are available here right and you will see there is also dot uh, mrx link config.yaml file also we get created that is by default it gets created but i will do what like i will uh, i will put that into a git ignore file okay so here we can just make a certain changes here at the end because that is not to be uh, like uploaded okay so i will say that uh, like dot mrx file or star mrx so if i do a save here so this should go into uh, this should be a part of your like it should not be a part of your now tracking okay so i will just do that and uh, that's all so in this way we can get ignore that part right so uh, so what i will do is i can first of all let's add all these changes right so i will just add a plus for git ignore demo and let's call this as an initial setup okay so uh, these are the state changes now so i will just mark here that i will write a commit message that okay this is called as let's say uh, uh, first update okay first update or you can say basic skeleton first update and base skeleton created so i can commit these changes okay let's commit this so you can see committing the changes and that is also amazing thing here and now if you want to check the history so you can check the history so this is the first thing that you are able to see here okay and now uh, what i can do is let's start working for the code part okay so first of all let's again go back to this so you will see that once i start creating here so the pipeline will be visible on the left hand side so let's create your first module here and let's call it as a like import import modules okay so there will be no parent comes because it's a start point so we can just write our import methods here so let me go off uh, let, let's the cam should go off here so that you will have a full screen to like concentrate yeah so uh, as you can see so what i will do is i will just i have already created a code because it's not a code session so you can see that i'm importing the tensorflow numpy matplotlib and warnings to ignore some warnings that is not needed and now one more thing is that like once you create write a component name then you can just simply write add to pipeline so on the left hand side you will see that first uh, dialog like first box appears okay and uh, let's run this as well this go so you will see that it has started circling here so you will see that it's that means it this module is now running importing modules session section is running now for that we will write a code for uh, this data ingestion part okay so it will take some time initially so let it be like that and so i'm just showing you an example of mnist data set only so we have mnist data set like this and then i will 
create our training and test okay so but this is just for loading that is data ingestion part is this much only and then after that i will do a split part so splitting is done here and then after the splitting and scaling we are also doing so if you want you can explain that so you can see there's a tick mark right so you will see that it is the what are the modules that we have imported it is able to find it out here you can see it is also telling you the alias as well so it's an interesting module right now for the data ingestion part so what we are doing is we are just loading the data first of all and we can keep this part here itself that means we are first of all or okay i think we can leave it there only because it's a part of your split right split data so uh, let's call it as a data ingestion we can just copy this and we can call it as a data ingestion and this has a dependency on import module section so if i do this if i click on check mark so you stick mark so you will see there is another pipeline got added isn't it interesting right guys so in this way we can visualize the entire pipeline right and that's that makes it very interesting you know that's why i like it initially when i saw it so let's run this auto module so it's done now what we can do is split data similarly we can do a for the splitting of the data so uh, here what i will do again i will write here and then i have it a dependency on the previous module so let's call it as a uh, data ingestion right to data ingestion i will check and then tick mark so you will see another one is got created here so this is about splitting of the data so let's run this now after this the next stage will be to define the model right so we can define the model so i have defined that how many unique classes we have that is our output layer and then i have defined the number of layers that i'm using and uh, again what i'm doing is like i will print the summary of the model okay so this is where we are creating the model definition so i will just again define the same component name and it has a dependency on the previous that is about splitting of the data or even if you don't want to create a dependency on anything so you can specify no problem but i will just call it as okay that it is being added after this so i will let it be like that okay because here it is having a dependency right it is getting the length of the number of output right so that is why it is being defined here so i have a dependency here on this one and now again i will just run this so it will create a summary for me so you can see that a sequential model it got created okay and then after that let's do the compilation of the model so it's the same regular thing that we are doing okay so here i will just again bring that code so we are using again same loss function optimizer and like matrix we have defined so right now it's uh, let's let's keep it a simple so i can drop this matrix part let it be just loss only so loss only got created so uh, this is about compilation model compilation so i will just again create this stage as well component name and I, it will have a definition the dependency on the previous one so define model and then i will just select so you can see after defining so we are compiling the model so it will again run and then what we will do is like uh, after that we will after definition of compilation of the model so you will get some warning as well because it, this actually it's nothing but it's creating an app uh, this abstraction layer on this one uh, these modules so that's why you will see so it sees a warning as well so not a problem then after that what i do is like after the training stage okay so after compilation we do the training part so we can just define it here so we are doing for just five epochs just for your show okay just to for the demo only so here i will just write here that it's a training stage okay training or we can simply define the same training the model so train model it will have a dependency on the compilation and tick mark so again new stage added right so let's run this so it will again run for five number of epochs and till then we can add the other stages as well so let it run and then after that we will have an evaluation okay so to evaluate a model since it's a model classifier right we have defined so uh, we can simply do the evaluation here on the test and this will have a dependency on what so this is about evaluation of the model so it will have a dependency on see now we will have two that is one is on the training of the model so this will create a train model and then also on the splitting of the data because what we are doing we are consuming we are consuming test data right so split data is also one of the dependency for it so i will just do a tick mark here so it will have a two dependency so now if you see here this is very interesting so you will see now that uh, let me out of it this so you will see now it is has a dependency on the split data the last one that is evaluation model because it is requiring here x test and y test as well so that will be your evaluation of the data so let's run this as well next after evaluation what we will do so you can see since it has a dependency so it's going to uh, like just uh, observe that okay whether there is a tick mark or not okay then only it will be uh, do the evaluation after that so next after that we will do what we will just save the model okay so let's do a save here and it will have a dependency on the simply the previous stage evaluation stage so after that only we are doing it so i will just make it like that way 
so you can see that one more stage will be added and it will only be added once uh, we have executed this right so only then only it will do the next part so this will be yeah so you can see now that was also added and then at the end what we will do is we will do certain inferencing okay so we will let's do the inferencing part okay so here we will get the data from text first three data points from the x test and then we will do a prediction on that and then we will just get the y prediction and then on that uh, we will also get the y test first three data points and then we will show the output here so this inferencing will be having a dependency on the like you can add it either on the save model only so let's call this as inferencing because it is depending on the previous ones so we will add it here through the save model stage and then we will pre press a tick mark here so actually it's uh, yeah i think now it is done so it has saved the model and now we can just put a tick mark here and that's all so it will show us the outcome so let's see that what is the outcome that we have got so now here you can see that we have got this prediction okay so that is predicted value is seven and actual is also seven and i can check for others example as well so you can see that all the examples are being predicted very well so this completes okay our training part let's save this okay so the it's already saved now let's expand this so that we can visualize our like information that we have got here so you can see that first we have created the stage right it is so easy to now understand this code right so you can see we have imported modules then data ingestion then splitting of the data obviously then after defining the model then compiling it and you can see even that what are the objects that got created is even uh, tracking that as well okay so we can clearly observe that as well then training of the model then evaluation saving of a model okay and uh, then we have the inferencing at the end okay so all these things you can see so this completes our stages okay and uh, if i click on this you get more information like you can even highlight that exact space like where you want to go so you can give when go there right so this is another advantage that it has okay another apart from that you can save this or cache this as well like the stage so you can even cache this okay so if i click on this so it will do a caching you will see a sign here and similarly we do the caching of this as well so that we can if we rerun this so it will uh, it will already have a cache information right so uh, that is also a great point that we can observe here and for more information obviously you will always you can always just go here and just look for the documentation part and uh, this will i will also put this into description okay so here you will see uh, more interesting features here and like key features you can just check once so pipeline creation caching management version control so version control and all those things i've already shown you caching i also shown you that okay how you can do a tick mark and then it will do the caching so uh, that's it i think and then let's do the commit here so you can see that it has done a change in the demo.pypy and so it's able to do the it will be able to track that as well so let's click on that and uh, we can just see if you just look for this so diff this differentiate of this file so you can just also observe that as well so if you just click on the history as well so we can do the observation from here all right so you can see that these are things that has been uh, there previously okay so let's go back again to the changes part and then looks into this diff okay click on this icon that is diff so it is able to show you that what are the changes that has been then uh, done so it says that okay nine has added so you can just look into that bottom that okay what changes has been done okay so all like you all shows green like if there is any uh, like update after that as well so it will show off like here itself right and uh, then you can just click on the notebook changes so line by line also we can check what are the notebook changes has been done so it's already all green because there is no uh, deletion or removal right so that's why uh, you can see all the information and even you can if you want to check here by uh, uh, like specifically let's say for a specific stage you can click on that it will just simply jump on that particular stage so it's a very interesting feature i like this one as well so let's do the commit okay we are satisfied with this one so it's a let's call it as a demo complete and we can simply first of all add these changes and then like demo complete and then commit the changes so it says that committing changes committed all committed so i think uh that's all right so i hope you have enjoyed this okay and maybe if you uh, like if you are a teacher right so you will definitely love it okay uh, because it's in this way uh, it will be very good for the students so so that they can visualize clearly that okay what's going on in the code part right and uh, i will definitely try to use it in my classes okay so hopefully if you are also a, a like teacher and if you like to demo things like this way it's a very good tool like so i really like it so thank you all uh, then until then keep on learning keep on exploring thank you